Hello, friends. James Stevenson back with another edition of James's Gems of the Week. I have as my uh, co-host today, Loki. Loki the Chihuahua, who's a little over two years old. He decided he wanted to be a little cuddle bear today. So he's, he's going to hang out with me while I record James's Gems of the Week. You know how this works by now. It's the third time I've done this. So what I'll do is share a screen. And I think what I'll try doing is the suggestion somebody gave me in the comments last week, which is to just share a browser window instead of the entire desktop. And I have zoomed way in here. So this may be a lot tighter, uh, which hopefully resolves a lot of the uh, questions and comments I've gotten in previous weeks over, hey, this is hard to read on my phone. So hopefully this is really easy to read on, on your phone now. I have skipped ahead in the process of just clicking on my profile and then clicking on likes and then scrolling down the timeline to the last couple of things that uh, were on last week's episode. So I'll scroll up and get you caught up to date on all the tweets that I thought were worthy of being gems of the week. Right, Loki? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start this off with shameless self-promotion of last week's video with a little roundup of tweets that were people saying nice things about last week's video. So the short shorts historian, Tesla historian said, love this. I spend most of my time my Twitter time on the dark side of Tesla, Tesla Q Twitter. So it was nice to see what I had missed from the good guys. Keep them coming, James. Oh, and it was an honor to be part of the gyms. Yes, Tesla Historian makes this uh, video every week uh, for doing great work. If you're not following Tesla Historian, do that. Now, I don't say if you're not following this person, do so every single time. But uh, because that would get really repetitive and monotonous for the viewer. But I highly recommend that you follow the folks whose tweets I'm liking. All right. Uh, David Lund says, this is a spot on self review of this video. What was David talking about? Uh, I, last week I said, have you reached the end of Tesla Twitter or unable to keep up with it? Tired of scrolling Twitter using your own fingers like a sucker? That's, that's a, a joke I shamelessly ripped off of uh, Homer Simpson uh, w when he saw someone using an iron lung. Uh, he said, and here I am using my own lungs like a sucker, uh, willing to put up with mediocre at best production quality. I think that's really wor what uh, David was getting at. Then enjoy James's Gems of the Week for June 12th through 19th. Well, maybe I'm, I'm doing a little better than mediocre at best production quality this week. At least you can see the tweets. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to have pretty good audio quality. I've got a pretty good microphone here. All right. Uh, this video works really well just listening to the audio, too. Fun listen while I did some yard work this morning. So uh, I will try to keep in mind that we have some audio-only listeners by narrating more of what you see on the screen than I have the past couple of times. The fact you read a lot of the tweets explain the context and often added historical context uh, all made it a great listen. Well, uh, the, all the knowledge in my head from years of fighting FUD on Twitter has to be good for something. And I think it's good for making these videos with uh, ad-libbed narration, uh, yours truly. You had me at mediocre at best. Honesty is in short supply nowadays. Uh, hey, the, these are not the best quality videos on YouTube, but uh, I'm glad people are liking them. Uh, John Acryder says, this is fire, James. So I like that tweet. Thought that was great. Follow Jana if you're not. Here is uh, Tesla owners of San Joaquin Valley. It was awesome. I actually missed a few of Elon's tweets. So I like the extra information accompanied with it. I like that tweet. Uh, Forward Cap says, if Tesla, so I guess we're leaving the self-adulation uh, stage of this week's video. The rest will be uh, well, I, I won't promise that there won't be more, but there will be less as we keep going. If Tesla can't repatriate China profits, how did they build Austin and Berlin and pay down $8 billion in debt over the past year? Uh, I thought that was an excellent point Forward Cap made. I'll follow this through and show you uh, Stephen Spencer's tweet. 
Apparently, Jim Chanos is still tweeting about Tesla after being wrong for half a decade. <laughs> Whether you're an investor or a trader, learn how to take a loss and move on. Otherwise, you're just another schmuck who blows up in markets. So here's the tweet from uh, Wall Street Cynic Diogenes, uh, which is Jim Chanos' Twitter account. Uh, famous longtime Tesla short seller. Uh, more importantly, what are gross margins at the current Shanghai factory versus Fremont? And can Tesla freely repatriate profits earned in China to the USA? So there's this conspiracy theory uh, in the Tesla Q community that even if the Shanghai factory is profitable, it doesn't matter because Tesla can't repatriate the money. Well, uh, where do I start with the wrongheaded notions in this uh, religious belief? So uh, one of them is that you don't have to repatriate all the money you make in other countries because Tesla has expenses in China denominated in yuan. So they can spend the money they make in China in China and then not have to worry about repatriating. Does that make sense? So the profits are what's left over after you take all of your sales and subtract all of your costs and expenses, right? The costs and expenses are more than the amount of the profits are, right? So a lot of those expenses are buying stuff from China. Either that stuff gets used to make cars and other products in China, or it gets exported, uh, uh, shipped to other locations around the world where Tesla is using, let's say, batteries made by LG or CATL. Um, so if the money is being spent in country, you don't even have to worry about um, currency exchange uh, problems with uh, foreign, foreign currency, currency exchange impacts, right? Uh, another one is, this is based on the Shanghai agreement that they would have to pay China a minimum amount of money every year, and if they didn't, China had the right to seize assets or lock accounts or whatever. Well, whether your contract specifies those terms or not, if you're operating a business within the borders of the sovereign nation of China, they have the right to do that. And if you don't believe that, um, ask some folks who invested money uh, in Venezuela, whether it's possible for uh, a sovereign nation to socialize uh, businesses. It's possible, right? Now, it's not in China's best interest to do that. And the Shanghai Gigafactory is more profitable uh, than those base expectations. So. Uh, a lot of wrongheaded notions here, but the one that I liked was the one in the reply from Forward Cap. If Tesla can't repatriate China profits, how did they build Austin and Berlin and pay down $8 billion in debt over the past year? And the additional context I'll add is, without doing any raises, Tesla didn't issue any stock last year, and they didn't issue any bonds last year. They didn't borrow any money from banks, but they did pay down $8 billion worth of recourse debt. So how'd they do it? Where'd the money come from? Where'd the money come from, right? It came from Shanghai. So they are repatriating the profits from Shanghai. It's, uh, it's a conspiracy theory and it needs to, uh, to get shot down every time somebody tries it on Twitter. So I applauded this effort from Forward Cap. What else do we have here? Oh, this is the tweet we just looked at from Steven Spencer, which I also liked. Uh, Glide Outside tweeted me when I watched the first 13 and a half minutes of I Cannot Underscore Enough reading his gems of the week, only for him to read out my gym without giving me the shout out. Well, at Glide Outside uh, is an account that you should follow on Twitter. Follow at Glide Outside and uh, you'll see a lot of good tweets. Hope, hope I covered it this week to make up for missing it last week. Uh, Fa Sky, Piang Fa on Twitter, uh, retweeted me saying, dude, that makes sense 100%. So what did she think made sense? Well, we'll scroll up and get the, the original post 
from Robert Reich at RB Reich, if you want to follow him on Twitter. That's spelled just like Reich, except it's spelled or it's pronounced Reich. Uh, if you ask Robert how to pronounce his last name, which is the way you ought to pronounce people's names, the way they want to hear them. So Elon Musk claims to be a free speech absolutist, but he fires employees who speak out against his antics and bullying. So this is about that uh, petition that SpaceX employees sent around, you know, during work hours at SpaceX when they were supposed to be working. Uh, with a petition complaining about how Elon Musk handles himself in his free time. Uh, Elon Musk, the guy who owns, you know, more than half of SpaceX, so controls the entire company and is their employer. And in the reply here, I said, freedom of speech does not mean freedom from the obvious foreseeable consequences of saying things most people disagree with, or in this case, saying things you're controlling employer uh, will disagree with. If the work crew you paid to put a pool in your backyard just stood around all day critiquing how you handle your personal life, you might fire them. I would fire them if the crew that I paid to work was instead um, signing petitions saying that they don't like the way I tweet or, uh, or, or the political views that I uh, express, that's, that's not what they're getting paid for. And they ought to know that that's not what you get paid for uh, while you're at work. So uh, that was my point there. And Foss guy, Young Fa said that made sense to her. John Peacock uh, sent out a tweet that I liked. To be honest, I also skimmed the video. It is chill and slides smoothly from entertainment to informative. I especially love the Lex text that I missed, it makes me wonder if I'm egotistical about my own existence. So John Peacock there is also addressing my, uh, my video. And um, the, the Lex tweet was whether he is a bot or whether the impersonators of his Twitter account are, are the, uh, the bot, which one is really the AI. Uh, impossible to know whether you are the AI or your impersonators are. So uh, John was originally a hard pass, uh, saying that he saw too much Twitter already. Uh, but I encouraged him to give it a shot because Bears on a Submarine had already commented on YouTube with a very similar take. My reaction upon seeing the notification, and again, after watching the intro, what value could James possibly create by making this? Then after watching the full video, I can't wait to see what's in store next week. Well, hi, Bears on a Submarine. Good to see you again. Glad to have you here. And hopefully, John, as well. OK, up we go. Uh, James J. Reed 777, hope I'm pronouncing that right, said, I was hesitant to post the critique of your production quality in the YouTube comments last night, but it was done in good faith and with humor. I'm glad you saw the funny side and embraced it. Keep up the er, mediocre work, <laughs> laughy face. All right, so uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to improve my production quality a little bit as time goes by. I like Glide Outside saying I'll allow it. Uh, follow at Glide Outside if you're not already. That's a good account. Let's see how many followers Glide Outside has. Only a thousand. We got to work on that, people. Do better than that for next week if we see more gems from Glide Outside. Uh, I like to tweet from Tesla saying automatically see a live camera view of your blind spot whenever you activate the turn signal. So they're retweeting Danielle X at love me some Musk tweeting the Tesla feature where using your blinker shows the camera on the side. Your turning was so helpful when I was driving during sunset and the sun was hitting my mirror just right so I couldn't see anything the camera was a much better view. Yeah. So as you can see, with a physical mirror, there's a lot of glare coming off of that. Uh, but with the Tesla rear facing side camera here, Tesla is processing that video feed through filters that are fixing the glare. So you can really see a lot better on your screen than you can see in your own physical rear view mirror. Pretty cool technology from Tesla. You can't get that in anybody else's car I'm aware of. 
And here's a tweet I liked from Sawyer Merritt. He, uh, he said, meet Don, a cool local Cape Cod resident I just met. He was walking by and was shocked that the car I was driving, Model Y, had a big frunk. That's a nice car, he said. I showed him around the car and showed him summon. He was blown away, LOL. He loved the minimalistic interior. So glad to, glad to hear about that uh, experience Sawyer had meeting Don and to get a chance to meet him virtually. I like to tweet here from Elon Musk. It said, AI gets better every day. And the cartoon here, I'll try to click on so you can see all of it at once, is uh, a guy sitting at a table. Uh, he's marked as the human race. And he's been writing out pieces of paper constantly that have all sorts of different things written on them, uh, many of which are already discarded on the floor that say things like only a human musician can compose in the style of Bach, only humans can recognize faces, only humans can play ping pong, only humans can improvise jazz, only humans can pick stocks. Uh, all of those have been crossed out because all of those uh, beliefs have been disproven already. The ones he still has tacked to his wall are things like only a human can play baseball. So far that's true, uh, only people have common sense uh, that one is, is standing for now. Uh, only a human can review a movie. Uh, that's, that's probably a decent one to, to have still on the wall. Really some gray areas here. The one right behind him is the important one. Only humans can drive cars. Well, um, that one will not stay on the wall forever. It's going to come down. Um, there are some uh, companies that are already allowing driverless ride hailing services using um, uh, a, a LIDAR based approach with uh, high definition, exhaustively mapped city streets. And those are limited to a uh, geofenced area for now. Um, that's not a solution that scales easily to, the, to cover the entire world, right? Uh, the solution Tesla is working on is a general solution that can work without knowing what environment it's about to drive through just by looking around the same way people do. Uh, that's the approach that is likely, in my opinion, to win in the long run. All right, uh, Whole Mars Catalog at Whole, Whole Mars Blog tweeted a 10% reduction in salaried headcount is only around a 3% reduction in total headcount. Now, how can that math be true? There's a 10% here and there's a 3% here and those are different numbers. So what in the heck is going on? Well, uh, Elon got this question on an interview he did last week and explained what's going on, which is there's a difference between total headcount and salaried headcount. And the difference is less than half the people who work at Tesla are salaried. And if you do a little math on this, the rough number you will arrive at is that it's 30% of Tesla's workforce is salaried with 70% being hourly workers in, you know, in factories doing uh, production uh, labor type jobs. So if you're reducing 10% of a salaried headcount that only composes 30% of your total workforce to begin with, that's only a 3% reduction in total headcount because 10% of 30% is 3%. I hope that made sense. Uh, Elon Musk says probably only a few months. Well, what does that mean? So uh, this was in response to that tweet, Alex A. Voigt on Twitter said, and Giga Berlin adds about 600 employees every month on top of Giga Austin and China expansion. How long will there be a net headcount reduction at all? And Elon says probably only a few months. So this helps answer that other question. How on earth can there be more Tesla employees at the end of 2022 than there were at the beginning of 2022 if 10% are getting cut? Uh, and the answer is that it was never 10% of the total to begin with. It was 3% of the total to begin with. And because hourly people are being hired throughout the year and if you go to Tesla's job board, they are still hiring for salaried uh, roles. 
in, in the organization. So both salaried and hourly hiring will continue uh, through the end of the year, and those will more than offset the layoffs. All right, uh, Gary Black sent out a tweet, uh, at Gary Black zero zero. Uh, no would have to disclose board has approved. What's Gary talking about? So uh, I tweeted that Tesla is always open after Tesla closed at 7 11 11 the same day uh, Elon liked a tweet uh, with 711 uh, signage bearing the numbers 7.11 or $7.11 as the price for both regular unleaded gasoline and diesel with the caption, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Well, uh, Ryan Lundquist at Ginger ZI Law I'm hoping I'm doing justice to that handle, said, could Tesla have started buybacks without some kind of disclosure? Do they need to make disclosures before that starts? Or could Elon Musk and Zach Kirkhorn have just pushed the buy button till it hit $711? Uh, and Gary said, no, would have to disclose board has approved. So the board needs to authorize share buybacks before those start is what Gary is saying. Uh, I liked that. Let's see here. Uh, Sawyer Merritt again saying braking Tesla Model Y and Model 3 have been named the most American made vehicles in the US by cars.com. This includes both EVs and ICE vehicles. Model Y overtook Model 3 for 2022 to become number one. GM is not even in the top 10. So yeah, if you follow this link, you can see, uh, wow, 47,000 likes on here. Elon must have liked this tweet from Sawyer Merritt. Uh, yeah, so the most American made vehicles are Teslas. So I like that tweet. Morton Grove, captain of all Tesla ships at Morton Lund 89, replied to Lauren Bobert. So what did Lauren Bobert say? Uh, liberals, have you ever taken a moment to ask yourself, what is charging your electric car batteries? And Muller, she wrote, replied, burning Teslas, question mark. Well, that's not a very good guess. I'm not aware of any uh, power production that comes from burning Teslas. Uh, the, the insinuation from Lauren Bobert up here, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I, I'm just going to keep, every time I pronounce anybody's name, I'll just apologize for how I pronounced it. Uh, I think what I'm, I'm gathering from context here, uh, she's challenging liberals uh, by, um, by, by proposing that maybe it's fossil fuels that are uh, driving the electricity to their car's batteries. Well, uh, fossil fuels make up a shrinking component of the grid. Every year, less and less electricity comes from the burning of fossil fuels. So, uh, if you buy a fossil fuel burning car, it can never get any cleaner for the environment. But if you buy an electric vehicle, it will continue getting cleaner as the grid gets cleaner, if the grid is where you're drawing your power from. But if you would like none of your uh, charging for your electric car battery to come from the grid, you can install solar panels on your roof and have your own power plant uh, as a part of your house that you're not really using for anything else, the, the top of your roof, why not generate your own electricity and charge your car from that? That's uh, a solution many, many people have taken advantage of. Uh, Tesla sells both types. Uh, and then uh, because burning Teslas uh, insinuated that Teslas are likelier to catch fire than other kinds of vehicles, Morton Grove's tweet that I liked was an infographic showing uh, car fires by vehicle type, uh, total fires, uh, 200,000 almost, gas cars uh, caught fire according to auto insurance EZ statistics. Um, and then if you, and then 16,000 hybrids uh, caught fire, only 52 electric vehicles in, in this study. And then over here, you've got per 100,000 sales, if you want to 
make a metric uh, per 100,000 vehicles sold. And you'll still see um, that electric is the safest kind of car you can buy. If, you, if what you're worried about is your car catching fire, you want to buy an electric car to reduce the odds of your vehicle catching fire by orders of magnitude. That's what this shows. All right. Uh, probably spent enough time on that one. Let me scroll up here. Sean Mitchell tweeted, bless your little heart. And I, uh, I liked that tweet. Now, what was this in reference to? Uh, well, in the same thread of replies to Lauren Bobert, Bill and Deborah Mize just tweeted a photo of coal cars uh, trailing a locomotive. Nothing to see here, just electric vehicle fuel, the caption uh, being that. So bless your little heart, uh, Sean Mitchell retweeted himself. This is sometimes easier than writing it into the reply again, if you've done it before. That photo is about as old as your data set. Please reconfigure. Here is energy production in your state and in the US. So let's bring this up. Coal looks to be almost nothing. You can barely even make out the coal bar on this graph of Tennessee energy production estimates for the year 2020. So, you know, even a couple of years ago, hardly any coal was being burned at all. The crude oil uh, bar is completely invisible. I can't make it out even on my 70 inch TV that I use for my secondary display. Natural gas uh, is a very tiny bar here. So the Tennessee Valley Electric Authority is getting most of its electricity from nuclear. That's the longest bar here, over 350 trillion BTUs. Uh, then there's biofuels here, wood and waste, and then uh, non-combustible renewables, over 100 trillion BTUs. So that's that one. And there's another graphic here. So US primary energy consumption by energy source shows uh, petroleum and natural gas are big components, uh, as well as uh, nuclear electric power at 8%, coal only 11% here, and then the renewable energy, which is the fastest growing segment, uh, is 12% and rising, composed of geothermal, solar, hydroelectric, wind, uh, biomass waste, biofuels, and wood. So I thought that was a good tweet. Hit like on that. And of course, uh, as the costs of sustainable energy production uh, come down over time, more and more people will adopt those, resulting in uh, less fossil fuel burning. Also, if the price of uh, fossil fuel um, continues to rise over time, consumers will seek out alternatives to purchasing fossil fuels to burn, such as sustainable energy. All right, uh, Steve Hamel at Steve Hamel 16 tweeted, are you being serious? I'm about to leave next week on my second road trip to Canada from Florida in two months, third since last September. It takes me almost the same time as with a gas car. I have a friend driving from LA to Northwest Territory, Canada, uh, as we speak. So let's click through here and see what was Steve replying to. Uh, well, Steve had to reply uh, in the original post here, here's your EV charging infrastructure to Richard Langston. So retweeting Richard Langston, does anyone understand that we do not have the infrastructure to support EVs? We can't charge them. We cannot repair them. We can't replace the battery. It would be cheaper to buy a new car than replace it. Oh, so every single thing there was wrong. And then uh, Richard replied saying, you're wrong. You can't just plug it into the wall. Uh, what? You can't? I do plug mine into the wall. Um, and what do you do if you want to drive farther than the other side of the city? Oh, Richard Langston. I can't tell if Richard Langston is a parody account of a clueless old guy uh, with a cowboy hat or not. Um, sadly, it doesn't have to be a parody account. So this could just be, there are plenty of people out there who earnestly hold the belief 
but you can't drive an electric vehicle farther than the other side of the city. Do they have charging stations on every corner? Richard asks, no. Well, uh, A, charging stations aren't needed on every corner. You don't need a charging station everywhere there's a gas station. Um, and uh, I think Steve addresses the other points pretty well. Uh, people are making road trips all across uh, North America uh, today with electric vehicles. Tesla makes it very easy with the supercharger network. Uh, all you have to do is push the right button on your steering wheel and say, drive me to wherever you're going. If that's on the other side of town, the other side of your state, the other side of the country, into some other country, it doesn't matter. Your Tesla will find that location, route you to that location with turn-by-turn -turn navigating directions and tell you all the superchargers you need to stop at and how long you need to charge at them to get where you're going. It's very, very easy. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that yet, right? Uh, we are Tesla fans uh, and electric vehicle supporters who are aware of that. And sometimes it's easy to forget that a lot of people, may, maybe even most people don't know how easy it is to travel long distances in a modern electric vehicle. All right, uh, Martin Vieja, again, the director of, or the vice president of uh, investor relations at Tesla, tweeted, many assumed that once competitors arrive, Model S demand will disappear, yet 10 years into production, long range models are sold out about a year out. Timeless design combined with ongoing innovation. Yeah, the, the, the Tesla Model S's today uh, ha have been greatly improved from the Tesla Model S's that went on sale 10 years ago as continuous improvement efforts are a way of life at Tesla. So if there's a way to delete or improve, uh, make something better, more efficient, uh, more cost-effective, Tesla is in favor of doing that. Um, and it's, it's part of the culture uh, it's Tesla's Model S's 10th birthday today, incredible car. So I like that. That got a like from me. That was a gem of the week. Here's our first gem of the week. I am not counting Jim Chanos because his tweet was not a gem. And again, it's Jim Hall running away with the, uh, the lead for most gems from a gem over the three weeks I've been doing this. Uh, now only down 81% with three skulls uh, emojis after it. So there's a, uh, a visual here of the Nikola Corporation stock chart uh, going back to August a few years ago. Uh, I think it was September of that year, August or September, where Nikola hit their highs. And it has been a bumpy ride down ever since uh, from about, I want to I want to say 60 bucks down to about five and a half bucks. So uh, people who bought in August or September a few years back, not very happy with the investment returns they have on Nikola stock. So let's follow this through and see what Jim was replying to. Well, uh, Again, it started as a Sawyer Merritt tweet, news, U.S. indicts Trevor Milton for, an, for new wire fraud. So he retweeted, spy squeeze, uh, an account I am not familiar with, with news that the U.S. has filed superseding indictment against Nikola Corp founder Trevor Milton, adding a new wire fraud charge in a New York court filing. So I replied, quick reminder, Tesla charts, among the most influential proponents of the Tesla Q movement, believed that Trevor Milton was being honest and forthright about Nikola's prospects, but that Elon Musk was lying about Tesla. So I, uh, I CC'd a few people I thought would want to see that tweet, among them Jim Hall, uh, Barkin Smeagol, Tesla historian, and Steve Hamill16, who uh, we just mentioned a few of. Uh, and I was retweeting Jim Hall's tweet here. So uh, yeah, uh, Keith Watson, not only did he short Tesla near the low of $177 last June, he also, that, that's pre-split by the way. So 
uh, mark that down to like $36 uh, in current days, um, the stock prices. Uh, soon, soon to be a, a three for one split again, down to like $12. Uh, he also helped his followers by pumping Nikola. Nikola shares are down 30% since Trevor was on his podcast. And man, did they ever keep sinking from there. Yeah, now down 81%. So uh, a lot of sad Nikola investors out there who believe Trevor Milton. Stephen Mark Ryan tweeted, TC is the very definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect, which you can Google. Uh, I uh, won't go into that too much, but TC did often accuse Tesla bulls uh, in 2018, 2019 of uh, being examples of the Dunning-Kruger effect. BR Cooper at underscore BR Cooper tweeted, what exactly is crooked about his compensation package? He doesn't receive anything unless he produces returns for shareholders that were widely considered to be absurd just a few years ago. If all CEOs were paid like this, nearly all of them would be paid nothing. And he included a graphic of Tesla's 2018 CEO performance award communication, which was sent out at the time, uh, late March of 2018, that Tesla entered into this compensation agreement with Elon. So the, the, share, the, uh, the market capitalization of Tesla was less than $60 billion at the time. And as we just saw from Jim Hall, it fell further from there. Um, in, in June of 2019, it was uh, about half this much, right? So a little over $30 billion uh, worth of market capitalization, the, the value of the entire company, right? So in order for Elon Musk to have received any compensation at all, he would have needed to, uh, to double the value of the company and thus the value of um, the investment people made if they bought Tesla stock at that time, March of 2018 to get only the first tranche of the 12 in the package. In order to earn all 12, Elon would have to multiply the company's value uh, in terms of market capitalization by more than an order of magnitude to over $650 billion, uh, which uh, you can still find news clips of from the financial cable networks when this news broke saying, what is this compensation package? There's no way that a company that's worth less than $100 billion could grow to these absurd levels when they have all the problems that Tesla had at the time. Remember, this was the constant stream of FUD. All the articles were, you know, near, nearly all the coverage of Tesla in, um, in, in news media was that um, they were not going to make it, that competition was coming, that uh, they weren't going to be able to launch um, the, or, or ramp their uh, vehicles, that the demand wasn't there, that it was gonna fall off a cliff, that the EV credits were the only reason that people bought Teslas, uh, on and on and on and on, right? Um, way, way more <laughs> uh, arguments against Tesla than I can recall were being made at the time. So, uh, in addition to growing the market capitalization, just pumping up the stock price alone would not have any value to Elon because these tranches could not be unlocked unless Tesla also grew revenue and adjusted EBITDA by huge multiples. I remember Tesla had lost money uh, at all points in time prior to this with you know a couple of quarters worth of exceptions over the company's entire history. So to see even the one and a half billion of adjusted EBITDA seemed like a tall order. Uh, 14 billion uh, seemed completely unachievable and Tesla is there already. This was a 10 year uh, compensation plan that uh, he, he had until March of 2028 to achieve all of these goals and has done so already. And it's, it's not even the end of 2022 yet, right? So if every company would uh, compensate uh, their CEO uh, the same way Tesla uh, has been compensating Elon Musk, 
there would be a lot less uh, CEOs uh, making this kind of money because these goals are outrageously uh, bullish and uh, difficult to achieve, right? Okay, next, uh, the, the next gym of the week comes from uh, Tez Latino, uh, Rafael Santoni, who, said, who tweeted, shout out to my brother Antonio at Spicy Hook that just picked up his first Tesla at the Fort Lauderdale, Florida Delivery Center. So here's uh, Rafael and Antonio with his new Tesla Model 3. Awesome. So uh, I, I like that tweet. Thought that was cool. Another from Jim Hall here uh, saying, I updated my mobile app and now I have the thumbs up, thumbs down option on mobile at I cannot underscore enough. If you haven't updated your app lately and want it, you may be an update away. Okay, so what he's talking about here is some comments that I got last week. This is probably too much to go into, uh, but some people only have this heart emoji that shows up. And some people have thumbs up and thumbs down uh, buttons that they can hit. So Jim was trying to give me a uh, recommendation there for how to get thumbs up and thumbs down in Twitter if uh, I can figure out how to do that. So what else do I have here? Uh, did I make it back to my home? I did the wrong thing. OK, so I got to go to profiles. And I got to go to likes and I got to scroll down until I find that. Okay, there's that tweet. We're getting close uh, to catching you up on uh, all James's gyms of the week. So Barbara at BMT094 tweeted his favorite Twitter accounts, Sawyer Merritt, Tesla News Source, Gary Black Double Zero, Institutional Perspective, at Truth underscore Tesla, Facts, exclamation point, at I cannot underscore enough, logical, level headed projections, at Fresh Jiva, great perspective, at Whole Mars Blog, FSD and jokes, at Jason DeBolt, inspiration, long term perspective. So uh, I like that tweet. I thought this was a pretty good list. It's always very, very challenging, nigh impossible to come up with any short list of accounts to follow on Twitter who will give you good information about Tesla, but I thought uh, this was a pretty solid attempt. At Size Michael, Michael Size uh, tweeted, you're an incredible account. Can't believe you have less than 5,000 followers. Who was he talking to? He was talking to Nathan Laus, uh, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing because uh, that's the handle at E-N-N -N underscore Nathan Laus, which has a duck. Uh, profile. So my, my understanding is that this is the Icelandic word for anonymous, and that there is some duck-related pun, like a sound-alike word maybe in Icelandic for duck. Uh, so you see some Icelandic text here under the profile for this account. Uh, it's an anonymous account from someone who is remarkably informed on a wide range of topics that relate to uh, sustainable energy and many, uh, many other fields. So uh, I'm not the only person who has been impressed by, um, by the number of uh, issues on which Nathan Laus is uh, able to present tons of uh, sourced um, uh, information on. So uh, there was a long thread today uh, that I don't have time to go into. But uh, Simon Evans was the original post here. Yeah, this is way, way too much to talk about, um, about uh, fossil fuels. So uh, Nathan Laus and I went back and forth in the replies for quite a while this morning, uh, adding discussion topics and points and observations on, okay, will the earth ever run out of fossil fuels? And I think we have agreed that the earth will never actually run out of fossil fuels, maybe until uh, the sun expands to absorb the earth and burns the entire earth. And at that point, 
all the fossil fuels will be gone, but uh, it will become uh, economically unviable uh, to purchase fossil fuels once the low hanging fruit of extraction of fossil fuels becomes so expensive that fossil fuels cannot compete with solar and batteries, uh, uh, you know, hydro, uh, geothermal, uh, all the other sustainable forms of energy will be less expensive or enough of them will be less expensive that fossil fuels are consigned to niche uh, applications where people are, are okay paying a lot more uh, to buy fossil fuels than they would to just get a sustainable energy source. All right, and I will back out of this one and we'll close with Riku Madala uh, from Finland who tweeted, the higher the electricity prices, the better investment the solar panels became. I, I got them just for fun, but in the current situation, they are on track to actually pay for themselves. What's the current situation? Uh, I think Germany has a lot of oil that uh, comes in from a pipeline from Russia, and there was some geopolitical problem there with supply that caused a lot of energy prices in Northern Europe to rise at the same time because it's a big shared market. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the important context missing from this, you may uh, notice from the flag of Finland here, is that Riku lives in Finland and Finland does not get uh, lots and lots of sunlight, uh, particularly in the winter. So um, he's on track to actually pay off his solar panels with the electricity he's producing. So that closes this week's James's Gyms of the Week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click the like button or don't. It's your life. Do what you want. And uh, if you don't follow me, why not uh, follow, uh, follow me and subscribe to my channel? You could do that. And I will see you in the next one.